I'm a quest guy, but I've recently come to find that I'm a bit underinformed regarding pieces of this game's lore, so I'm hesitant to call myself a lore hound. Do you know why I'm so underinformed? Because I scarcely read supplemental lore books. Quite the cardinal sin, I know. To rectify this failing, I've decided to take it upon myself to crawl through this long list of lore related achievements and complete every single one with the ultimate goal being acquiring a master quest point cape. So when I don't know all the lore, at least I could flex the cape and cling to what little bit of clout it brings me like a lamprey stuck to a fish. Maybe we'll learn something on the way. There's a lot to do, and it's hard to know where to start. I think finishing up all my undone mini quests is a good jumping off point. So let's start with Sheep Share. Once a quest, now made mini. For good reason, I suppose. Not really much of a quest, but instead a one day farmhand job. Which is potion, not much to say about it, bring some stuff to Hetty and be done with it. This used to be a quest too, but times change. This next one is a bit more involved than Witch's Potion. First, we need 752 obsidian shards. The exact amount is based on the rune date divided by 10 with the remainder truncated, integer division. So the amount needed is always increasing. The Fight Cauldron minigame isn't that bad to grind through anyway, so it's not a problem. We need an uncharged Tokal Zoe for the mini quest as well, so this is a convenient way of using up all its charges. Yeah, we could just die with it, but it grants bonus damage against Zar S creatures while it's charged, so why not use it? We also need a Ring of Stone. It used to just be an enchanted onyx ring, but when Jagex reworked the luck mechanics, they changed the onyx ring to a tier 3 luck ring, moving the ring of stone onto the Zara drop table. It's part of the Karamja drop log, actually. We could buy it from one of the Zara shops for around 300,000 tokul, but if I can check this off the drop log, why not? So I spent a couple hours killing Zara. First I tried zipping around with Bladed Dive, then switched to Legacy Range, then was one-shotting them all. The latter was a lot faster. Didn't get the ring as a drop though. I did get a ton of tokul, so I'm just gonna buy the ring. Now all we have to do is deposit some tokul in the Fight Cauldron Coffer, wear an uncharged tokul Zoe, and leave the Tsar City. Use the Ring of Stone on the Ring of Visibility, and the Wandering Gaul shows up because why wouldn't it? With the mini-quest completed, we can talk to the Gaal, Gaal, whatever, and have him translate the data spheres, or the things that the Tokar uses books, and he'll give us some interesting lore regarding the Elder Gods and how they create worlds using the Elder Artifacts, and if they're unsatisfied with the results, the Tokar return to the Elder Kiln, melt into the Sacred Lava, and the Gods rip the Kiln out of the planet to move on to the next one. Now the Tokar just sit and wait for the Elder Gods to return. Well, they don't do that anymore since the Gods already returned, but at the time of this mini quest, they were still waiting. Here's a mini quest I should have done ages ago when I was focusing on Heart of Galenor reputation. You get an Anima Shard as a reward. It basically explains how each of the Heart Generals came to be fighting for their respective gods. Hellware is an elf from the Cyware clan who was searching for a way to cure the crystal shapeshifters back on Tarthiad, but while exploring Galenor, they were captured and experimented on by the terminally ill human Grigorovich. Grigorovich, we learn, made a deal with Sliske to live forever and was transformed into this maniacal jester form, his body now matching what he truly was, a monster. He swore fealty to Sliske when told he could grow stronger and more powerful by consuming other life forms. I don't think it was planned at the time, but we will learn during the quest Twilight of the Gods that Grigorovich is actually the Chthonian demon Erasinus suffering from SIPD, superimposed personality disorder. It's best not to think about it. Vindicta was the daughter of Hannibus and Morvanon, two dragon riders, Ilyanka, during the original God Wars who fought for Zaros. Two of the five dragon riders sided with Zamorak, Morvanon included, during his uprising. But Hannibus, who sided with no one, convinced the other dragon riders to wait. As a result, none of them were present at the coup. Zamorak took this as a sign of betrayal, sending his Furies to deal with the treachery by hunting down the dragon riders with hellhounds. Unbeknownst to the Furies, Morvanon had an egg which was rescued by the dragon Gorvek and tended to until it was ready to hatch in the Sixth Age. That's a long incubation period. Finally, the twin Furies were sent to the heart to claim the huge source of anima in the name of Zamorak. When they arrived, they wanted nothing more than to dispatch Grigorovich immediately, but their orders were clear. Personal vendettas were secondary. You see, Grigorovich not only tortured Hellware and his compatriots, but he also killed and consumed, or consumed and killed, the order is unknown and probably irrelevant, the Twin Furies' sister. So they used to be the Triplet Furies. Is that what it would be called, Triplet Furies? Or would it just be the Three Furies? Or the Fury Trio? Needless to say, these five fellows all have a history with one another. The Tales of Nomad explores the tales of... Nomad. Uh, 
yeah, he's a pretty cool character and I could make a whole video on the lore behind him. I should actually, so I won't get into too much detail here. The most interesting fact about him is that the person who taught him all about soul magic was Orev, an exiled Terra Guardian Magister. You may know him as the, the Magister. Well, I guess that's not very surprising. Father and son, I did this on Taskron recently. Talk to Erwinson, talk to Sigley, talk to Erwinson, easy. So since his name is Erwinson Sigleyson, would his son's surname be Erwinsonson? Raksha, the Shadow Claw. Colossus. Colossuses are actually a specific group in RuneScape lore. It's basically all the wild animals that manage to attain some level of godhood from being exposed to a large amount of anima or an elder artifact. Loranab was one, Araxi, Biara, the Wushenko Guardians such as Seryu, there's a few of them. What makes Raksha stand out is that he was exposed to shadow anima, becoming something like an anti-god. Rather than being empowered by the stuff of elder gods, he was empowered by the stuff of Erebus. He also kind of pushed Cranon over the edge by projecting visions into his mind, and we all know what happens at the ends of roads that lead to Zautak. Finally, turtle combat. No real lore here. We just have to outfit a bunch of turtles with weapons and build them a training facility. Unfortunately, since they aren't teenagers nor mutants, they're probably not going to get much in the way of notoriety. You see, merchandise is all about branding, and ninja turtles just ain't going to cut it. Sorry guys. With all the mini quests done, let's run around and grab some of the easy to get achievements. The ones that don't need much grinding to square away. Ones I've already done, but I just need to click through some chat boxes. Like Guthix in the Chamber of Secrets. You need to fill all the memory storage bots, turn them into the archivist, and then listen to the memories. Yikes, I didn't know this. I just learned that Guthix used Juna's race's homeworld as bait to lure Tuska away from another planet. Whether this other planet was Gelinor is unconfirmed, but he chose Juna's homeworld as a target simply because fewer lifeforms lived on it. He tried saving some of her race, but Tuska arrived too quickly and he was only able to save a single pair of eggs, Juna and her sister. But only Juna hatched. Guthix never told her about this. I wonder if the player can. There's an achievement that requires us to defeat a demon flash mob and then come talk to Brother Celerity to get the Malleus Demoniorum. Demoniorum. Demoniorum? Yeah. But Iron Men cannot participate in demon flash mobs for some reason, so we can just talk with the monk and get the book. Advanced sweeping requires us to go to a bunch of witches and have them enchant our broom, the one from the Swept Away quest. Here's a tip. One of the witches is in the underground pass, the one with the cat. If you've completed Morning's End Part 2, just go to the Death Altar and use this tunnel to get to the dwarf camp just below all those platforms you have to hop across. It's a lot faster than navigating the rest of the pass. You can even teleport to the altar with the Terran and Quiver 3. After the feud quest, you can help Ali Morrisane a little bit more and outfit his shop with runes, blackjacks, and, well, outfits. You need to talk to shop owners in various places in the game and convince them to provide Ali with some stock. I remember, ages ago, long before cosmetic overrides, my bank standing outfit was a dragon pickaxe, trimmed slayer cape, a black plate body, black plate legs, and one of these fezzes. I totally forgot fezzes were in this game until just now. They're pretty cool. Cecilia, I'm begging you, please. Leave this abbey. Or stay, I don't care. Chillin' with Arav. Rest easy, hero of Arav. I never unlocked Chip Trollheim Teletabs. We just need to grab a journal from this dwarf and bring it to Dionysus, also known as the wise old man. Now this was a tedious one. Clues in the monkey drool. We gotta get one of the monkeys out of the Ardoin Zoo and feed it bananas until it spits out a medium clue. Up until now, I'd been downgrading a bunch of my hardened elite clues into mediums whenever I hit a cap. My thought process was, if I ever need mediums, I'll have a ton. If I ever need easies, I can just downgrade the mediums. But apparently, if you're at the cap for medium clues, the monkey won't give you one. So I had to turn all 500 plus of my mediums into easies. Such a shame. And I had to shove 500 bananas down this dumb monkey's throat until he gave me the clue. Took forever. Let's move on. Talk to this ghost so he too can move on. Something about his wife loving him or whatever. I don't know. Here's a thought. So the standard explanation for ghosts is that they're souls trapped in the physical world, right? Souls are supposed to be the essence of our being, our hopes, desires, dreams, personalities, all that profound shit, right? Just ignore the fact that a swift blow to the head can alter every bit of that. Head trauma hurts the soul, I guess. Anyway, ghosts seem to have hopes and desires. So do ghosts also have souls? Is it souls all the way down? Clearly these ghosts have a physical form and allegedly real ghosts can interact with the physical world. So there's a physical component to them, meaning they're more than just a spirit. If our hopes and desires come from a soul animating and piloting this flesh prison called a body, and the spirit itself can manifest as something physical, then it too must have a soul piloting its semi-corporeal self. How many deaths must we endure to decouple ourselves from all things physical? And also, what brand of toothpaste do you think Bigfoot uses?
Let's get this guard out of this tree. He's been up there since 2005, but he can finally go home. After sitting up there for so long, I wouldn't be surprised if he develops some sort of deep vein thrombosis. Oh man, that just made me realize how actually terrifying blood magics could be. Just imagine telekinetic embolisms. Fires are mostly harmless. Let's light this fire and get these herbs. Post quest stuff from Fairy Tale 3. Never got around to it. Hall, come to Templeton. Just gotta talk to Simon Templeton about selling him noted artifacts, then let the Pyramid Plunder Mummy know. Easy peasy. When Do No Evil was first released, elite clues were a bit rarer than they are today. After the quest, you can use Ava's Alerter to find one buried in one of four locations. Mine was in Meyerditch. Squeal for coins. I hate Yelps. I hate that he was added to this quest as some cheeky send-off as if the problem with Squeal of Fortune was that it wasn't thematic with RuneScape, that somehow Treasure Hunter is better because putting the spinning RNG wheel behind a facade of treasure chests is more RuneScape-y. I also hate when devs acknowledge problems in their games and play them off as cute little jokes. Remember the first iteration of Calgarian Demon Familiars? Remember how big they were? One of the conversations you can have with him has him say, but most of all, they curse you for having an unnecessarily large familiar. Giant familiars are obtrusive and most players hate them. Jagex clearly knows this, but will they do a damn thing about those obnoxious drakes? It's been years and they've done nothing. But hey, they shrank the Calgarians a bit. Man, what in the world could the difference be? Don't joke about things players are frustrated with like you're as much an outsider to the company as us. This hello fellow kid stuff is condescending at best. At worst, contemptuous. That's my weekly rant. Bandos's memories. Interesting read. Another topic I'd like to do a lore video on. Sucks that lore videos don't get a lot of attention. Needless to say, it's a good thing that Bandos is dead. I know, I was there, man. Get a couple books about the destruction of Edgeville following the quest Ritual of the Majorod. Okay, rapid fire time. Get treasure from the pyramid, fully upgrade pig machine, listen to a long story about Dagonoths, show the king your tool, steal Movario's junk, light the dragon forge, free this guy from the rogue's castle prison cell, get 20 coins from the rusty anchor pub bartender, get 10 from Bill Teach, but for some reason the game doesn't even acknowledge this achievement's being completed with the pop-up box thing, claim the Tim and Crunchy pets from Tim and Crunchy, access the secret tomb after Crocodile Tears, access the secret tomb after a Man in the North, unlock the shortcut in the Uzer Mastaba, return the Goblin Brooch to Mistag, get all of Saren's memory crystals from across Prif Thinnis and be confused as to why you can't get two of them until you return the other 14 crystals and realize you already got the two you were having trouble getting, make a Zaro symbol for Char, and finally grab this key from Goshima, enter the Temple of Amanishi, use the key on this door, and enter part of the island of Amanishi only accessible through the dungeon. I saw this place when I did the episode with all the ARC mini quests. I recorded one of the title sequence interstitials on this bridge. I was wondering how to get here. Well, this is how. We grab a key from this chest and use it to open another chest, getting the achievement. That's a lot of achievements. And there's still a lot more to do. A lot of long grinds. We need 117 Dungeoneering, 115 Slayer, and 120 Archaeology, but we'll be going on that journey together. It'll also get us that much closer to a completionist cape. I also streamed Carapac recently, again. It was a lot of fun, even though the distraction of chat makes my kills way sloppier. What are you gonna do? I really do want to stream more. It's a lot of fun interacting with you guys, but I'm torn between YouTube and Twitch. On the one hand, I already have an audience here on YouTube. A small one, but an audience nonetheless. However, people on Twitch are there to watch streams. Most people are on YouTube to watch videos. My next stream is going to be on Twitch an hour after this video goes up. So 1 p.m. EST on October 17th. Come hang out at twitch.tv slash just background noise. All one word. Hopefully the wilderness flash events are working and we can explore them together. Thanks for watching. I hate this game. <laughs>